This is the day. Let us be glad. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Good morning. And welcome to any visitors or guests that we have with us today. As we come together to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with our prayers, our praises, and our songs. So with that, let us set our hearts to worship with the singing of our opening hymn. steadfast love. Let us confess our sins unto the Lord. I confess to God Almighty, before the whole company of heaven, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed. Merciful Lord, grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, whom your Son has taught to call you to pray, hear the prayers of your people and grant us all good things in accordance with your will, not for our sake, but for the sake of the name of Christ, in whom we are made bold to pray. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this Sunday is from the book of Genesis, the 18th chapter. Then the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done altogether 
according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went towards Sodom. Abraham still stood before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose that there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not spare it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to put the righteous to death with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered and said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him and said, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty-five are found there. He answered, For the sake of twenty I will not destroy it. And then he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak again but this once. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went his way when he had finished speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading serves as our basis for our sermon this morning. It's from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, the second chapter. St. Paul writes, Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. In him you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink, or with regard to a festival, or a new moon, or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism and worship of angels, going on in detail about visions, puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments, grows with the growth that is from God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we rise in honor of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, Teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. 
Give us each our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has arrived on a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, do not bother me, the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his impudence he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated as we continue with the sermon. Again.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is from the Epistle Lesson with particular attention to verse 13 and following. And you who were dead in your trespasses, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. This is our text. Please be seated. Peter Francis Geraci. That name sound familiar? His ads are on TV all the time. Right up there with the guy who says, one call, that's all. <laughs> Peter Francis Geraci. He advertises, uh, he's an attorney, that, you know, are you in debt over your head? Are your bills piling up? Are there creditors knocking at your door? Are you getting those annoying phone calls? Well, then call us. We're the experts of getting rid of your debt. You can file Chapter 7 or Chapter 13 bankruptcy, and your debts will be eliminated, or you'll be able to pay them off with a schedule. All you have to do is dial 1-800-INFO-TAPES and you'll find out how it works. Yes, people get themselves in hot prairie and the bankruptcy courts are never ending. People's budgets exceed their income, their wants, and their desires overwhelm them, or sometimes a problem comes up, a loss of a job, a divorce, or a tragedy like an illness or death. There are provisions to cancel debt. And did you know that they are based on biblical principles? In the book of Deuteronomy, it says that after the seventh year, the Jubilee year, a person who is in debt shall have them forgiven. And the founding fathers started that idea. Thank goodness they read their Bibles. And that's how the modern day bankruptcy laws have that seven year cycle. And so the Lord said, after the seventh year, someone owes you money cancel the debt. Now over and over in scripture we see that happening with Jesus' parables, especially where the one where the, the gentleman was so far in debt that the king brought him forward and said, instead of putting you in prison and your family and selling all your things, I'll forgive you your debt. And he had a pretty healthy one too. And yet that same man who had forgiveness came up to a friend of him that owed him like a hundred bucks and said, you better pay me my money or I will have you thrown in jail. I will take everything you have. And when the king heard about that, he says, how come I showed you mercy for the thousands of dollars you were indebted and you cannot show the same courtesy and mercy for a hundred dollar debt. And the king sent him off to prison for being an ungrateful person. Now that we've set that before us in our thoughts, St. Paul explains it to the Colossians very good. A lot of us were brought up with piggy banks. Put away your coins, save for a rainy day. A lot of, some of us here are old enough to remember the depression. Some of us were children during the depression. And I was raised by, I was after that in the 50s, early 50s, with parents who went through it. And we knew what it was like to be frugal and to save what our values were based in. 
And that's what Jesus is saying here. He said, you received Jesus. We've told you about him. You put him into your hearts. You followed our examples of him, to walk in him. And so you're rooted and you're built up and established in that faith. And that's why we're here this morning, isn't it? It was, faith was established in us, we were rooted in it, and we're here because of it. He says, you abound in thanksgiving because of it. So he says, be careful. Be careful. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy, empty deceit. No one impresses you on traditions that maybe you should do this instead of thinking the way you're doing. Maybe those elemental spirits of the world, like this little faction that's demonstrating or protesting for this ideal, or that one over here that's protesting because they're protesting and they don't like protesters. And it goes on and on and on, doesn't it? So if I tell you something, or I stand on a street corner, perfect example, I just thought of this. One of my professors years ago went to Yellowstone Park. And the ranger was going on about how all the old people there, those geezers, no, the geysers, I'm sorry. <laughs> how the geysers were formed many, many years ago, billions of years ago, and all this happened and everything. And he's doing the textbook uh, evolution thing right out of, out of the book of evolution. And so my professor said, young man, I have a, a, a different version of that account. Do you mind if I read mine? And he says, is that a Bible, sir? He says, yeah, let me tell you about in the beginning how it really came. He said, oh, sir, this is federal property. You can't open that Bible here. If you start reading from it, I'm going to have to confiscate it and uh, ask you to leave the park. If that doesn't work, I'll have to call the police. True story. That was over 35 years ago. And they're still out there telling us that what Jesus has to say isn't right. That the Bible is full of hooey. You older folks have to explain hooey to other people. <laughs> and you know that it just isn't right. My idea is right, not yours. Because I listen to so-and-so who listen to so-and-so, and, and you know how it goes on and on. <clears throat> and so St. Paul says, don't fall into that habit. He says, Jesus is the whole fullness of the deity of God which dwells in him. And you have been filled with that, with that knowledge, with that faith, with that trust. <coughs> Excuse me. He said, you were circumcised with a circumcision without hands. Now we know that tradition of the Jews. And what Paul is saying, the evil flesh of ours has been cut away to open our hearts to Christ. We have been circumcised in his blood to have our hearts open to the knowledge of the love of God. He is the head of all rule and authority. And that's good to know because even though our world's running amok, Jesus is still in control. So, he says, you who were dead in your trespasses, you with the uncircumcision of your flesh living in the world in worldly ways, you and me, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our debts, our trespasses, by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with all its legal demands. All this he set aside. Now the Pharisees were really pretty pompous and arrogant and rude. And they said they were doing things for God with a smile. 
but really looking down their noses at everyone else. And they formulated 96 extra laws besides the Ten Commandments that they would impose upon people. You can only walk so many steps on the Sabbath day, the next one you're working up, oh, nicks on that. The parable that Jesus said, if your ox fell in a well on a Sabbath, you dig it out, you get it out of there because that ox is your John Deere tractor. You need that ox. But if someone else falls down the well, eh, leave him there until Monday morning. We'll get him out later. He just can't work on the Sabbath. But boy, if that ox falls in there, we've got to get him out. That's what Jesus was talking about. He says those laws, those trespasses. But what about the ones we commit against each other? Those trespasses, especially one about the ones we commit against God. Well, that's called sin. Our thoughts, our actions, our words, oh, they're so offensive. They're so demeaning at times. And you know, there's that one where you, you did something or said something and you go, oh, oh, I wish I wouldn't have said that. Yeah, well, wishes are upon a star. You got to learn how to control this and this and this by the fullness of Christ you have in you. And that's hard to do. That really is. I had some surgery on my foot one time. A fellow from the congregation, I wanted to rototill my garden. And so he brought his rototiller over. And as we were lifting out of the trailer, it dropped on my toe. And I just went, oh! But he looked at me. I go, Wendell, what's wrong? He said, I thought that would be the first time I'd hear a preacher cuss. <laughs> and I said, Wendell, you don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Even in our thoughts, we have those moments. Those are our debts. Our sinful ones that we commit against each other and against God. They happen every day, as much as we try to say, oh, I'm not gonna be indebted to anyone today, I'm not gonna sin, we're gonna have a great day. You know, Lord, this is gonna be a wonderful time, and I think I've told you this. You know, you, we get in that mood, and then all of a sudden, 10 minutes later, it's all out the window. I get out of my bed, I walk into the hallway, the cat yacked up a hairball, I stepped on it. Oh boy, that cat! <laughs> Coffee pot's not working. This isn't happening. So much for that perfect day. And of course, you gotta blame everybody else. That's our sinful nature. That is how we rack up our debt. St. Paul says that Jesus disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame. Those ones who would condemn people and be sarcastic and say, you better pay up. So he says, therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in your questions of food or drink, with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. You know, it, you live as a Christian and it doesn't matter how anybody else treats you, makes fun of you. I've been called a goody two-shoes, a Bible thumper, all that stuff. And I smile. And I say, well, thanks for the compliment. <laughs> and then they don't know what to say, and they walk away. But he says, they're going to be out there testing you, each one of us, by throwing their philosophies, their things at us one after another. They get us to think away from Jesus and to the ways of the world. Paul says those are just a shadow of things to come. It's going to happen. But the substance, the control, belongs to Jesus. So let no one disqualify you. Insisting on asceticism, worship of angels, being puffed up, going on, talk about things without reason. You know, uh, that happens in phony baloney religion too. 
all that puffed up attitude. When I was in the military of Minot, North Dakota, a fellow airman came up to me and he says, Brother, are you saved? And I said, yes. I've been baptized in Christ. But when did that happen? I don't remember. I was a baby. But it happened in February of 1953. I know that. But do you know you're saved? I go, yes, because I've been baptized in Christ. No, no, but do you really know you're saved? And, you know, he's one of these mountaintop experienced guys. you got to write down the date, the time, and everything that, you know, the heavens opened up. And I said, yes, I've been baptized. He said, oh, you don't know if you're saved. I'll tell you what, you come to my church, and my pastor can look you in the eye, and he can tell if you're saved or not. I go, really? I didn't know Jesus came back yet. <laughs> I said, I bet he puts his pants on the same way as you and me, and he's going to tell me I'm saved? Brother, I am saved in the blood of Christ. I'm a sinner. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of debt tallied up, but I know I'm saved in Jesus. So that's what he's talking about here, those, those puffed-up guys with the central mind. Who, who put saving grace and religion and everything on, on themselves or what you must do. I went into a, a Pentecostal thing one time. A friend of mine invited me, and I'm not knocking the Pentecostals, but they were having one of those healing services where the guy goes up and zaps you and you fall down and all that. All right, I'm a skeptic and I'm watching all this. And then a bunch of us were carted off in little rooms and the guy was going to uh, teach us how to speak in tongues so we could edify ourselves to the Spirit. You know, get that deep concentration by, by babbling away. And people around me are starting to do it and so on. And I just stood there. The guy came up to me and says, what's wrong? I don't know, nothing's happening. I said, I speak English perfectly. Well, with a Sheboyganese accent there, hey. <laughs> but I said, God knows what I'm thinking, what's in my heart, what comes out of my mouth with all this. Well, it doesn't work unless you can talk in tongues. That's because your faith isn't strong. And I says, you know what? My faith is just fine, even if it's like a mustard seed. I still belong to Jesus as one of his brothers and a child of God. Have fun. Goodbye. And I walked out. Again, what Jesus is saying, beware of the puffed up preachers who tell you what you must do rather than what Jesus has done for you. And that's what Paul is saying in our text. Are you in over your head in debt? In your sins? Is it time there's no hope? There's no relief? Well, here's one for you. Instead of filing chapter 7 or 15, why don't you file chapters 1 through 1,189? That's how many chapters there are in the Bible. Immerse yourself, rather than info tapes, to God's Word and place it on your hearts and your minds. You want to eliminate your debt? Jesus already did. He nailed it right to his cross. And now may the peace of God that goes beyond all our understanding keep our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Now I invite you to stand and say with me the words of our Christian faith in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, God is the Father of all the worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who could rise in heaven. be seated as we collect our offerings unto the Lord and sing the offering hymn. Jesus, 
and wait upon you to give answer to what we ask for his sake. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Remind us, O Lord, to approach your mercy with the humility of faith, rejoicing what your Son has accomplished for our salvation, and in mercy for the whole world. Keep us from pride and arrogance, that trusting you to grant us all things needful and beneficial, our hearts may rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy. Deliver us from selfish greed and instill within us your own compassion that we not pass by those in need or turn away from those who cry out for mercy. Lord, in your mercy, give to all pastors and church workers, to Matthew Harrison, presiding in Synod, John Willie, our district president, and Thomas Schmidt, our circuit visitor, grace to serve us faithfully and well in your name preserving among us the truth of your word and the integrity of our doctrine and confession. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us, Give to Joe Biden, our president, the Congress, Tony Evers, our governor, the legislature of the state, and all judges and magistrates, the wisdom of your word and spirit, that they may serve with faithfulness and integrity and honesty for the common good, and we may be enabled to serve you in peace and quietness. Lord, in your mercy, give comfort, healing, and peace to the sick, we pray, to the suffering, the aged, and the dying. Especially, we pray for Nancy, for Ruby, for Charlene, for Kenneth, for Landon, Denise, for Sherry, for Greg, for Karen, for Don, for Jean, and Mike. For Sharon and Mary, for Butch, for Richard, for Joe, and for all those whom we name in our hearts, dear Lord, that are hurting with ailments of body, mind, or spirit. We pray for whom we name before the Lord in our hearts, grant them peace, patience, and courage until they are delivered from their afflictions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have opened your hand to us and granted us gifts well beyond what we deserve or have asked. Grant us a grateful heart that we are willing to support your kingdom with these tithes and offerings that are due you and our neighbor in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to us grace that we may approach the table of our Lord with a clear conscience and receive there his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins, the strengthening of our faith, and to equip us for the good works that glorify you. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we pray for those who serve our country, who wear the uniform proudly and with dignity. I pray for Ryan, for Matthew, for John, and for all those in military service. May you watch over them and keep them safe in their duties. Return them home to your families. And Lord, watch over them and all people that serve our country and help them do it with pride. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray to your Lord for safety for the junior youth group who are attending uh, camp this week. Watch over them and keep them safe. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week, for Jacob and Carol, for Jonathan and Cheryl, for Beth, Wayne, and Kayla, Skylin, Ellen, and Wendy. And Lord, also uh, those whom we know that are celebrating uh, wedding anniversaries as well. Watch over them all, keep them safe, and in your loving grace, continue to open their hearts and minds to receive you, and that you love them dearly. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us prepare our hearts to receive the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us 
by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver, and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be our glory, honor, and worship. To the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you for the forgiveness of sins. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink all of you, for this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. O Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming to the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Peace of the Lord be with you all.
Let us pray. Almighty God and merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayers for the sake of him who died that we might live and who lives ever to plead for us before your throne of grace through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon you with his favor and fill your hearts with his peace. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn, number 575. announcements that need to be brought to our attention this morning? Well, okay. So you know, uh, Uncle Fritz called this week. And he was driving down this country road and he noticed there was uh, some chickens out grazing in the ditch. And you know chickens do that a lot and they like to come up to the edge of the road and pick the gravel. And so he slowed way down so he made sure he wouldn't hit any of them. 
up till about like 20 miles an hour. And he noticed this one chicken looked up at him and he started trotting alongside his car. And so he was past the whole flock and he sped up and the chicken's going 30 miles an hour. He stepped down 40 miles an hour and his chicken's keeping up with him. And finally he hit the speed limit, 55, and the chicken took off. And he went back to tell the farmer that one of his chickens ran away. And he said, but he said, one of your chickens ran off down the road. I noticed it had three legs. And the farmer says, yeah, I raised three-legged chickens. You know, people, there's always fighting. Somebody wants an extra drumstick. And I, he said, really? Well, how do they taste? He says, I don't know. I haven't been able to catch one. <laughs> That was a dumb cluck for telling that. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs>